right, so we're going to go over how to distinguish between uh, types of tissues for a lab. This can be pretty challenging uh, for students, but if you'll learn to look at those features that are characteristic of specific types, it makes life much, much easier. So in this video, we're going to look at epithelial and muscle tissues, and then we'll do the other two types in the second video. So we have four basic tissue types. We have connective tissue, which is going to be things like your tendons and ligaments, epithelial tissue, which is going to be your skin, skin type tissues, uh, muscle tissues, which we have skeletal and cardiac muscle, and then nervous tissue, which innervates all these other tissues and allows us to communicate uh, with the brain and control and sense things in our environment. When we're looking at epithelial tissues, a uh, part of their name comes from their characteristics. They're characterized by the type of shape they have and the number of layers they have. So that's really important to understand what these terms mean. One, because it's part of their name and two, because it helps us to identify them correctly. So a squamous cell is going to be flat and irregularly shaped. We have some squamous cells over here on the left and they look a little bit, little bit like fried eggs, okay? And so you've got this little flat shape pattern. Sometimes they can be way, way flatter than what's shown in the picture. And sometimes uh, they do just look little fried eggs. It's, uh, so we next have cuboidal, which is going to be a squarish type uh, shape to a cell. Uh, the cuboidal cell right over here is very square. And uh, we definitely want to say they're squarish. They're not true squares, but they do resemble a square. And then the last shape is going to be columnar, and these are going to be more like a rectangle. They're going to be longer and more like a column. Uh, sometimes now these can be kind of intermediate between the two, and so it's important to find a way to tell the difference between the two. And so I want you to take a moment and look at these pictures here and look at the nucleus and see if you see a difference here, because sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a, if it's a column or a cube, it might be kind of a squished column. So if you see the difference here, what you're looking for is in the simple cuboidal here, the nucleus is in the center of the cell. So it is in the center of the cell, but on the simple columnar, these are not in the center of the cell. Now they might be up here at the top, okay, instead of at the bottom, uh, but they are definitely not in the center of the cell. And so if you're not sure if it is cuboidal or columnar, then look at the nucleus. Where is the nucleus? Is it in the center of the cell? Okay. Now, if you look at these two pictures on the right here, uh, they have different, uh, actually just the one here on the bottom. These all say simple, and this one says stratified. And we're going to look at this in the next um slide here, the difference between simple and stratified. And so let's review these here. We've got our simple cuboidal at the top because it is cube shape. We have our simple squamous at the top right. Squamous is flat and it doesn't have a real regular shape. And then we have our simple columnar here on the bottom left because it is column shaped. So next, we want to classify the layers, and you can kind of see this a little bit in the last slide. Uh, so the first name actually, or part of the name, I should say, actually comes from the type of layers. How many layers do we have? So if we're looking at this first picture here, uh, we can see there is one layer of cells, and it looks like little eggs there. There's one layer of cells, and so we call that simple, all right? Simple. Simple is one layer of cells. Like in the previous slide, we had some simple squamous epithelium and simple cuboidal epithelium. And this is how we would name those tissues. You would need to include all three of these words here uh, to properly name it. It is epithelial tissue, it is simple, and it is squamous or cuboidal. Okay. And so you need to practice writing all of the words down that are used for that name. And you need to practice the spelling as well. Uh, and so stratified is like this example over here. We have multiple layers, and it's usually many, many, many layers. And so stratified just means many layers that are stacked together. And so here we can see on the left 
the simple squamous epithelium, and then we have a stratified example on the right. So we have stratified squamous epithelium. So stratified uh, uh, examples are going to be layers of flat cells, which is what we have in the top right. Stratified, um, that should say stratified squamous, that is a typo. So let's write that out. It's not because that's not cuboidal, that is squamous if it is flat. And doesn't work that great, so that should be squamous. And then if you have layers of cubed shape cells, which is what we have right here, um, then it is going to be stratified because it is in multiple layers, cuboidal because it is cubed shaped, and then epithelium because it is epithelial tissue. So understanding what these words mean really helps and it's much better to do than just trying to wrote, memorize. Uh, and then lastly, we have what we call pseudo stratified. Well, what does pseudo mean? Pseudo means false. So these have the appearance of being stratified, but they're not really stratified. And so these three pictures here on the bottom are going to be what we're looking at for that example. OK, so pseudo stratified means it looks stratified, but it's not. And so here in this first example, we have simple columnar epithelium. All right, and this is ciliated. It has some cilia on the top. Uh, definitely columnar, no question about that. It doesn't look uh, intermediate, okay? Uh, and then next we have stratified columnar. Now I want you to notice these look like they're in the middle, but all of these nuclei don't necessarily look like they are perfectly in the middle. So that is a good example of one that kind of looks cuboidal, but is columnar. And so you'll be able to tell there's not necessarily an even amount of space around that nucleus there. Okay, So that is stratified because there's multiple layers, and it is columnar, and it is epithelium. All right. Uh, now, on the first one, since that does have cilia, we would actually want to put the word ciliated in there, but it is not uh, on this graphic here. So that's kind of a, a little mistake on this graphic part, but it should, should say ciliated if it has cilia. Uh, that is getting a little head power. All right, so pseudo, pseudo stratified means that it looks like it is stratified, but it's not really stratified. So you have to look very closely. So this is one that tends to uh, trip students up. So if you are looking on the microscope, you might see uh, something like that. And where that line is, uh, there's of course not a line there. The line that I just drew, uh, it looks like that might be multiple layers. But if you look closely, you can see that there is no dividing line. There is no bottom there. It is truly only one layer. It's just that the nuclei are very random. So you have to look and see, does the cell go all the way down to the bottom? All right. So this would be pseudo, pseudo stratified because it looks stratified on, upon first appearance, but it's not truly satisfied, stratified. These are all one cell, uh, one cell here. Each one of these is one cell. It, it's not divided into cells like this picture here on the other side. So this is pseudo stratified and truthfully it is ciliated. So we would say pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium. All right. And so you need to learn what these words mean. And it's really going to help you to understand and know what you're looking for and what you're looking at, how to identify it. All right. So here on the top layer, we have some simple because it is one layer, cuboidal because it, it is squarish, uh, epithelium because it is epithelial tissue. So on one side of the epithelium, we'll have a space and we call that space the lumen. Uh, you don't see that very well on this particular slide, but we'll take a better look at that in a few. Um, and so on one side, you will look for a lumen. So that is a very important way to look for um, when you're looking on a slide, let me back up. When you're looking on a slide, you're going to often see many different types of tissue. And so if you're supposed to be looking at epithelial tissue, uh, you need to be looking for that free space for the lumen. All right. And so that's going to be helpful. Um, you're going to have a free space or you're going to have a lumen, which is going to be in the middle. All right. We'll look at that in a little bit. Uh, and so the side that faces the lumen is going to be what we call the apical surface. So apical is going to be facing the lumen. And the other side, we have these uh, squiggly lines here and we call uh, and cells. 
and we call these cells fibroblasts, okay? And so this underneath what we call the basement membrane, and so this pink line here, that is the basement membrane. So you, you'll usually be able to see that basement membrane. So we have some epithelial cells. We have the apical surface on top. The basal surface faces the basement membrane, okay? And then there's usually going to be some connective tissue. That's what these squiggly lines are. We have some connective tissue underneath, and it basically connects the tissue to the underlying features here, all right? And so then we have these fibroblasts, and you can see these here, all right? You can see some fibroblasts in there, and those are in the connective tissue. So the side that faces the lumen is, or the free space is the apical surface. The side that faces the basement mem membrane is the basal surface. So basement and basal go together. Uh, so the basement membrane, again, that's the pink line, anchors the epithelial cells to the underlying connective tissue. So it's kind of like the glue that sticks those two together. And then we have what we call the matrix. The matrix is everything in the space but the cells, like the fibroblast. All the fluid, which we sometimes call ground substance, uh, and the fibers, and then for this example, this is perhaps collagen, those are all going to be in the matrix, all right? So in order to get a full credit uh, on your exam, you've got to be sure and put these full names, all right? So we really need to take time to learn these correctly. So here we have some simple squamous epithelium. These are found, of course, what does squamous mean? Flat. And what about simple? So yes, yeah, simple means uh, these are going to be found one layer deep, okay? There'll be one layer of cells. Uh, these are very, very flat. Uh, the dark spots here are going to be in the nuclei. Um, sometimes they're going to uh, surround the, the lumen, which is the opening here, okay? And so this picture here on bottom right, this area here, the opening is the lumen. And it looks like an empty space, or sometimes it'll be kind of like this one over here on the right. Those are red blood cells you can actually see uh, in, in the lumen, in the opening. All right. um, so you'll find these typically in places like the lungs and the lining of blood vessels, which is the example here on the left. That would be the lining of a blood vessel. So on the bottom right, I want you to notice these cells are completely flat. Okay, And so you see these little dark spots? That's the nucleus. So the cell, and it actually it's like right there, very, very flat, okay? The dark pink and then the purple. That's the flat cell there, all right? So the top um, right here, you can see this is like alveoli in the lung tissue, in the air sacs, and the little outline there is showing the outline of the epithelial cells. And then you can see the purplish parts there where the nuclei are as well, okay? And so that's part of how you identify these. And so now let's look and see on this particular picture here on the bottom left, where do you think the simple squamous epithelia here are found? I've already told you that this portion here, portion there is the uh, lumen and those are red blood cells, okay? So can you see the uh, simple squamous epithelia there, all right? And so this layer here with the dark spots, that is the epithelium, okay? And so like I said, you're going to be looking at multiple types of tissues because our tissues are joined together. Uh, they're not just usually one type in a picture. Sometimes they are, but usually not. Uh, so you need to be able to look at these and know kind of what you're trying to identify, all right? So the lumen sh shows up as a space. Uh, these are going to, when you have a lumen, they're going to be flat and be kind of longitudinal or in a circle around a lumen, all right? Um, and we'll look at some more examples of this uh, where they're not surrounding a lumen, where you may have some that are keratinized and they're stacked up and flattened, and we'll get into that. So a very common way to see simple cuboidal is you see the simple cuboidal cell with a very large nuclei compared to the size of the cell. Uh, you'll often find these go around the lumen in a circular pattern, as we can see here in the left picture. 
uh, and these are cross-sectional views. So you always want to be careful and pay attention, uh, especially if uh, you were coming into the lab or even on a virtual um, microscope. Uh, what view are you looking at? Are you looking at a longitudinal section or are you looking at a cross section? Because they will look different. And if you have those, you sure need to be sure that you look at them both because otherwise you may be shocked on the lab exam if you have not looked at both. So the pink highlight here is the apical um, surface here. Let's see if I can show you right here. There's the pink highlight right there. All right. And so that is the apical surface. And then the basal surface is near what? The basement membrane. And so you can see that outlined in yellow. That is the basement membrane there, okay? And so you can see these are, are surrounding a lumen in that circular pattern. Um, and you've got some cuboidal cells. You've got that large spherical uh, nucleus here. Remember, simple means one layer. Cuboidal means they are roughly cube-shaped. And you can see the outline uh, over here of a square to make you see that it is cube-ish shaped. All right, and so think about uh, substances, locations for these are lining the, uh, the inside of a tube. All right, so this is gonna be things like kidney tubules, ducts, and glands. So simple columnar epithelia. Uh, simple, of course, means one layer. They're column shaped, so they're elongated cells, and that is a key feature that you are looking for, these elongated cells. These are uh, mainly in the digestive tract. Um, they have, they're also found in ducts, excretory ducts of glands, and so we need special cells there to produce and release certain substances like mucus. Okay, and over here we can see we have a goblet cell embedded here and that is a mucus producing cell and so they are embedded in the uh, simple columnar epithelia. Goblet cells tend to appear as a somewhat clear cell most of the time uh, so I may ask you which tissue this is for example on a lab exam but I could also point or circle point to that feature or, or circle that and ask you what is this feature and your answer there would be goblet cell okay same thing with something like the lumen. I could point to this lumen here and say, what is this feature? And the feature would be lumen, okay? Uh, these, like I said, line the digestive tract. Uh, they're found where we have excretory glands and they typically do not have cilia. So here we have an example of ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Uh, this will also have some goblet cells. Uh, remember, pseudo-stratified means it looks stratified, but it is not truly stratified. Uh, and of course, you're going to have longer cells because it is columnar, but you can see here they're not perfect columns. Um, the dense hair-like projection, projections on the apical surface, these are the cilia. You can see in this picture, sometimes these are very, very light. These are little hair-like projections, okay? And so we would call that ciliated. Uh, so if I asked you what that structure was, you would want to say cilia. You can see there are some uh, goblet cells here as well. And so I could ask for that. Could also ask you to identify the nuclei. Um, simple columnar does not usually have cilia, so that is, that is one way to differentiate these. The cilia basically move in an undulating pattern and beat up and kind of push particles and bacteria uh, out and prevent them from entering the respiratory tract in the lungs. And so the goblet cells will produce some mucus, okay? And so the mucus is, you know, mucus is gross. It's nice and thick and nasty. Uh, and, but then the bacteria get trapped at that mucus and then the uh, cilia act to move and sweep that mucus out in order to keep the bacteria and other foreign particles from um, entering your body and making you sick. So you will find these in areas like the respiratory tract and the trachea. And so pseudostratified, like I said, look for cilia. That's a good way to identify if you have pseudostratified. Uh, but if you look at this carefully, it does have that stratified looking appearance to it but they're different cells they don't um, the cells themselves go all the way down 
So stratified squamous epithelium, and the only difference here is the number of layers. But we need to know the difference between the words for single layer or multiple layer. So quiz time, what is the word for a single layer of cells? You said simple, you are correct. And so stratified means multiple layers of cells. And these pictures are very good representations. This is normally what you're really going to see when a cell is stratified. Right? And you can see that they get flatter as they get closer to the top. Uh, that is because they are becoming keratinized. They're getting squished. And we'll talk about that in lecture quite a bit. Okay. So we've got flat cells, but they're in multiple layers because remember squamous means flat. And so the correct name, stratified squamous epithelium or epithelia. Epithelium is plural. So you would need to put all three of those words in order to get full credit. So looking at these pictures, you can see that there's multiple, multiple layers of very, very flat looking cells, especially at the top, they're very flat. Um, you will find this anywhere that you need protection from things like abrasion, that keratinized type what we saw layer, uh, they're getting squished up and they're forming a protective layer. So think about things like the lining of the esophagus. When we eat food, it can scrape off of the, off, um, scrape the cells off, but since they are stratified, you can, they can grow back in multiple layers, okay? So you'll find them also in areas like the mouth, the vagina, epidermis, okay, our outer layer of skin, where we're more prone to actually undergo some type of mechanical force that might injure the cells. So that was just the, the primer to epithelial cells. It is, of course, not all that you are going to need to know. You're going to learn more about how to identify these in your lab. So pay close attention to that. This is just kind of try to get you in the field for understanding what to look for and how to differentiate these. You don't want to try to just white knuckle force and memorize because then you're not really learning it. And it can be very, very difficult if you just try to memorize all of these tissues. It works much better if you learn their characteristics and how to tell the difference between them. All right. And so we have three types of muscle cells now. We've got skeletal. These are going to be voluntary under voluntary control. This is going to be what you're typically thinking of when I say the word muscle. So this would be like your quadriceps, your uh, gluteus maximus, and your biceps and triceps. All right, so you're kind of familiar with those. This, this is that type of muscle that we're able to control consciously. Then we have smooth muscle, which is involuntary. And this is going to be in places like your intestine. And then cardiac muscle, which is also involuntary. That's a typo there. So you should have an IN, involuntary. All right. Uh, they do have some uh, basic characteristics, again, that we want to look at. Not as many as epithelial, but they're either going to be striated or non-striated, which means alternating uh, shades or bands. It's not a different color red there. I'll just use white. Your alternating colors, all right, that is striated, so it has the appearance of having lines. And then they can have a single nucleus or be what we call multinucleated. And then, as I've already said, they're going to be either voluntary or involuntary. So here we have an example of skeletal muscle. This one here on the left, you can really see those alternating dark and light bands, the striations very, very well. These are very long, thin, multinucleate. They have lots of nuclei. You can see that in both of these pictures. You see lots of nuclei. That's the kind of purplish marks. Um, and they don't branch. Now, these kind of appear to maybe branch, but they're not branching. They're not uh, separating out completely. And you'll see that in the cells that we look at and the examples we look at where they are branched. Okay. And so we have what we could say looks like they're striped. We have alternating dark and light bands. You can really see that over here in this example, okay? And then we have special names for those bands. We have the A bands, which are dark, and the I bands, which are light. And you're going to learn how to identify those. And you're definitely going to need to know that for your exam. So cardiac muscle tissue is striated, but it will have splits or branches in it. And you can see that over here in the top right picture where the circle is. It, it has a little bit of a split and branch in them. The most defining feature for cardiac muscle is going to be these intercalated discs, and that's these little purple hash mark almost looking lines. If you have intercalated disc, it is going to be cardiac muscle. And you can also, of course, see the nucleus here. Uh, and of course, you'll learn more about cardiac muscle 
during lecture and your lab ex uh, lab um, assignments. <laughs> so intercalated discs, though, you want to remember that is definitely cardiac. So smooth muscle is, is not technically striated. Uh, even though the top right hand uh, picture has somewhat of a stripy look, it is not an alternating dark and light, dark light, dark light, dark light. Okay, you may have some white in there, but it's not every other fiber. Uh, it does not branch. There are no distinct fibers and filaments, and you have lots of nuclei. Okay. So this is a good example showing what you would actually be looking at in a slide. Organs are made up of multiple tissues. And so you are hardly ever going to look at a particular slide, even in a virtual lab, uh, and see only one type of tissue. All right. So let's start here at the top left-hand corner. This is an example of intestines or possibly jejunum. Uh, you can see here the blue word we're pointing to. This is epithelial tissue, okay? And that is overlying some connective tissue here in the middle and then muscle tissue down here because we have multiple layers. And, and you know that by instinct that you have a top layer of skin and then under that that you have ligaments and tendons, okay? and then down to bone, muscle, and then bone, all right? And so we have multiple layers of tissues, and so we have to stop and think, what am I looking for and what am I looking at? So at the top right here, we have this really dark portion here at the very top, this very pink, that is the epithelium. And remember, epithelium always has some uh, connective tissue here underlying that, okay? Then we have some muscle tissue over here, and then another type of connective tissue, which is going to be adipose, and that is fat tissue. So when you look at these pictures, you can't just take a card and just memorize this one picture. You've really got to learn and understand what you're looking at, where the specific tissues are, and how these are interwoven together. On the left is an example from some lung. Uh, you can see in there is some blood. We've got muscle tissue over here, epithelial tissue, and this looks like it is a, a, a cross-section, perhaps, uh, instead of longitudinal. Uh, and then on the right is the trachea, and here we have some epithelium. It's kind of hard to see, but I think I see cilia on there. Uh, then you have some cartilage underneath here, which is connective tissue as well, and then it looks like some muscle tissue, perhaps, down here. Uh, so you've really got to stop and look at what you are looking for. So here is another example where we have some cuboidal epithelium surrounding some lumens. We also have some fibrous connective tissue here. Okay, and so in green, that is the cuboidal epithelium, and you can see the lumen here in the middle of these. All right. This is another cross section here. You can see we have the hair shaft and then follicle and then dermis around it. So I hope this helps you kind of get prepared to start looking at these. Uh, if you'll really dig in and work on understanding these characteristics and features, you'll really learn this well and ace the exam. All right. Remember, there's only four lab exams, so you need to be studying these every single day and look at all the different slides you can look at. Um, there are lots of websites that have lots of slides that are labeled, and so that's a really good way to start. And then some of them will have quizzes that you can go and practice afterward. Okay. All right. So uh, the next section, we'll look at connective tissues. We'll look at bone and blood.